asked about at the moment is water quality. How long of a lever is this? How much should we care about water quality and what it's being transported in and stuff like that? You know, I think it probably depends on where you are and what the risk of contamination is. You know, I mean, I think I take reasonable steps to ensure it, but I'm also not so obsessive that my life spirals out of control around it. Now that said, a couple of reverse osmosis filters in the in the house. Aquatrues? I don't know, but I know that they meet the standard for filtering out all PFAS. There's a filtration standard that you have to go by and Plumbed in or tabletop? Uh, they're plumbed in. Cool. Yeah, oh, that's cool. Yeah. So it's easy peasy. Change all, it once every six months. So yeah, all water bottles are, you know, we use glass water bottles. They're all filled out of those things. So the only water I'm drinking out of the tap that's not that is in the bathroom when I'm brushing my teeth um, and taking my pills before bed or whatever. So I don't think I obsess over it. I think that the two most important things you can do to avoid PFAS from a drinking perspective. What's PFAS for the people that don't know? Yeah, so there are these chemicals in plastics typically. I think we could make a safe case for having negative health consequences. Um, now they're also found in things like Teflon and fire resistant you know, clothing and things like that. So they show up in other areas, but for most people, the, the dominant exposure is through drinking water in a plastic bottle um, or contaminated city water if you drink it. You know, I haven't had our water tested, but I just sort of assumed why bother testing it? Why don't I just put the filter in that gets rid that is known to get rid of it? Yeah, I had Dr. Shanna Swan on the podcast. She wrote the book Countdown, mm. which is tracking sperm decline and testosterone mm. levels as well. Yeah, interesting. Over the decades, uh, mathematician turned closet epidemiologist, I suppose. And uh, she was fascinating. And her stuff is is pretty scary, uh, the impact of this. One of the things that I didn't realize, you talk about declining testosterone levels and you think men, but it's women sure. as well, in a big way. The adrenals creating a testosterone for women, less margin for error yeah. in some ways too. And she attributes it to plastics, I'm assuming. Endocrine and disruptors, a lot of microplastics. What are your foods being transported in? Really interesting example of people who get maybe raw milk and it's in a glass bottle, it's from a farmer's market. It's like, was it manually pumped or was it pumped through a machine? Because that machine has got BPA in the pipes mm. and the milk is warm because it's out of the animal. So you're pulling the BPA from the pipes, even though it's organic cow, grass fed, open mm. pasture, but no blah, 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 blah. But okay, what's the transport? Yeah, and it's just a minefield to try and weave your way through. I mean, one of the big ones for her, and this was, you know, me and my entire twenties, hot food in plastic Tupperware. You know, I'm doing, I'm doing meal prep. I'm eating healthily. It's like you just put baking hot food and there's no BPAs in it. Yeah, but it's like BFCs or it's BPFCs or whatever the, you know, replacement was that they did for that. Uh, so yeah, she's got a big protocol that you kind of follow with regards to that. But I think it's a big deal. I think the endocrine disruptor thing is a, mm. a really big deal.